Hey everybody, it's NCP. <clears throat> I'm not even sure where to start on this video. This is going to be a bunch of videos put together, a bunch of tiny videos that are important but don't merit their own, their own video. But let's get the main thing out of the way. I'm going in for uh, a surgery to clean me out, my esophagus. Uh, Friday. Wow. So please keep me in your thoughts and prayers. And then Monday I'm going to go in and have the actual real surgery. I mean they're both they're both going to sedate me and put me unconscious and breathe for me. So they're pretty pretty good surgeries, you know. But after Monday I'll probably spend a day in the hospital, and everything will be fine after that. No more problems allegedly. We'll see. Now let's get back on some flu preps. I've been focusing on the dog. Um, it's a lot of things. Um, this is gonna be. This hasn't been rehearsed or scripted in my mind, so it's just gonna come as it comes. I got an O2 concentrator <clears throat> for my passed away, you know, stepmother, and um, basically, it's you know, it's good. It got inspected. About a thousand or so hours ago. Uh, I've been setting since about 2017. Uh, I cleaned it out. Because um, my dad had, you know, new ones. But this is put away. This this one only goes to five liters and he needed 20. Because they had to put two machines together for the higher flow. But that's another story. But <clears throat> this one was not used. Uh... So I went ahead and bought all new filters off Amazon for it, uh, bacterial filters and such, and redid that and tested it, uh, put an uh, analyzer on it, and it's still putting out, I think, 93% pure oxygen at um, 5 liters. So <clears throat> I've got tons of hoses, you know, just tons of this other stuff and humidifiers. One thing I did is I took a Deer Park bottle and ran a hose to the end of it for the dog, like an oxygen mask. And there's big holes inside of it, so, you know, like a human oxygen mask. <clears throat> and if it's over her snout, it's not airtight. Uh, she breathes just fine with it, you know, open. There, there's like two holes the size of a, a quarter on there, you know, so she can breathe without it. It'll just give oxygen enrichment. And she's pretty compliant with it, um, to tolerate it. Um, so we can add moisture or whatever in case the dog gets the flu and needs supplemental oxygen. Now I have a, a human finger uh, pulse oximeter meter and that works just fine on her. Uh, you can shave their ears and do it or you can buy a special one for a vet about a hundred bucks. I'm using the human one. Now that being said, the thing that tends to get you from the flu, the new, the new flu, is uh, secondary infections like pneumonia and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of wanted to figure out a way to make a respirator. So I got a CPAP machine in there. Oh well, yeah, let me go in there. Hold on. All right, so I'm in the bedroom. This is the the uh, humidifier for my CPAP. I usually just put ice in there at night, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> there are things for oxygen enrichment, uh, you can connect the hoses to your face and stuff, and I didn't want to do that, so, I was going to drill this out, every couple months, supposedly they give you a new reservoir, a new mask, all that stuff, right, I was going to modify it if I have to, I was going to put like a little, you know, valve stem on here for a tire and do it in, but I got a better option, this right here, I went online, and this is for a uh, so clean. And if you see this little nipple here, it comes in here and has a little uh, tube that comes out of it down here. But I tore that off. It's just a rubber tube. Um, when the machine's running, if that tube is connected and this thing is full and you don't have the oxygen right, you have a water fountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you're pushing water pressure. But this replaces the top of this one here. And it just sits on top of there. And this this whole thing comes out, all the plastic and all the filters. And it sits right on top there. 
and it allows oxygen enrichment um, while providing positive pressure. So that's my idea for what I'm doing with this, um, or how I'm doing it, I mean. Um, I've seen several people on several boards talk about such things, but I thought about this in advance because my oxygen runs kind of low anyway. It runs 94 to 95. I put this thing on and I turn the machine on 5 liters uh, per minute and there's a lot of leaking. A lot of leaking. I think my mask is, you can leak up to 5 liters a minute with the extra stuff, but it's enough to get my O2 up to 99 to 100. To 100% it kind of fluctuates, but I don't run this all the time because, you know, auction is a drug and there's all kinds of other problems that can happen if you don't know what you're doing. And, you know, I don't. But I know when the auction goes low, this is what I'll do. And, um, you know, it won't act like a ventilator, obviously, but I saw an article a while back on one of the boards that this, uh, I think it's a Chinese doctor, they're having a lot of children dying from, uh, pneumonia or tuberculosis or something like pneumonia and basically he took and uh <clears throat> just put the the oxygen on and then he ran another line to like a coke bottle with water in it and let it bubble and that created enough back pressure to keep the villi and the lungs open so i have a cpap machine so i can adjust the pressure as i see fit um you can change them on the the res meds uh by like holding the home button and the the knob and get into the settings and stuff, but you shouldn't do that. But I did that and I was waiting to go to the sleep center and have them yell at me and I had rehearsed this big fight in my head and they said, okay. <laughs> they go, you know, whatever works for you. And you're not having, you're not having an apnea event, so we don't care. So they were good with it. They're, they're pretty cool. But that's what I did for a human. Now, on top of this, <clears throat> well, let me go on the next thing here. Hold on. I went ahead and got a reverse osmosis hooked up. I've had it for a while. It's 11 stages, as well as antibacterial soap. Now, I was going to do the chloride hexamine uh, surgical scrub, but I have a septic system, and what that will do, I know I need clean sink, sorry. What that will do is destroy my septic system, even if I put septic shock in it. So, unless the flu is actively coming, hmm, I'll have to go to the gym and take a shower every other day there because it lasts two days, so I can't really run that septic, or I have to do it outside, or I go downstairs, well, hold, let me go downstairs, hold on. Okay, this is the reverse osmosis uh, unit I got, I put it in. Real simple, went over here, and just plumbed the tap in with a uh, shark bite valve, and plumbed it in. Didn't plumb it to the copper down here, because supposedly they can pick that up, I don't know. Whatever. But it's got the UV sterilizer on it and all that good stuff. 11 stages. And puts the minerals and electrolytes back in. That's important because I also want to use it for my aquarium. Um, to refill the water. It's got a 4 gallon tank. It puts out 100 gallons per day, which we don't use anywhere near that. But we're going to fill up old soda bottles with this purified water. Um, the blue line goes up there to upstairs, so... It's a little bit less pressure than you would expect, so it flows a little slow because it's got all this extra tubing it has to go through and it's up height. And now I plan to put a, um, a tap. You know, I got all the parts here, all the valves. I'm putting a tap in to run the ice maker on the new refrigerator. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to have reverse osmosis water for the water on the refrigerator and the ice maker. So that will be purified. And the refrigerator, I believe, has its own... Um, it's on a purifier, but it ain't going to be like this. So, <clears throat> that's the, uh, the current updated status of the preps. Um, I totally forgot what I was going to talk about. I I'm just kind of, I'm kind of fixated on getting the surgery done. I don't like when people, you know, cut on me and such. But, I figured out. But down here, this goes to the sump pump, the, the sink over here. Okay. And this is surgical scrub. So if I use it in this sink, we're good to go. Um, it goes outside. It won't destroy my, uh, my septic system. So that's pumped outside and then it goes wherever. But 
I can take sponge baths down here if I have to. Just for the sake of making myself bacterial and viral immune for a day or two. You know, so. And it doesn't really sud, so. I may have to add some surfactant to it, but people have been known to take the, the veterinary grade 2% and use that, mix it with like a body soap or a body wash and take showers. Now, I've heard diabetics doing this for a long time because, you know, sometimes they step on things and don't feel it and they make sure it's on their legs so it's all, you know, good so the bacteria doesn't grow or infections or what, what have you. But guys are talking about how it turned their septic system into a thick sludge because it totally destroyed the bacteria down there which that kind of makes sense but you use it every day i think i could get by and throw some septic shock down there i got i got septic shock for my uh septic system <clears throat> but we'll see you know like i said i'll if i really want to get hosed up with this stuff i'll even take a shower outside and i've got an adapter um Hold on. I think this is for a washing machine. Oh, it is actually. It um lets you combine the hoses, the hot and cold, into whatever. So I can have hot and cold running water down here into like a little pool, or just let it run down, you know, to the drain down there and drain out. Put a little shower area down here, which I don't want to, but I can. Um. I originally got this so I could give the dog warm warm water uh, baths outside. And just put my garden hose to it and run it out. But I could easily just take this and take a garden sprayer and run it out there. <clears throat> or if I really want to be good, I can hook it to the pressure washer, I guess. <laughs> Get out, I'd do it. But, yeah, sure, why not? Pressure wash. You know, tear some skin off. Deglove. Deglove my skin. You know, that's, that's probably a bad idea. But, anyway... This doesn't suds by itself, so there's no surfactants in it, so I'll have to figure that out. But, like I said, this will give me hot and cold water. Um, all right, so we're drinking UV sterilized water, you know, pure. And I don't think, like I said, I don't think this flu is going to be big in America. Uh, we did get like 14 new cases last night, all, all clustered in, I'm not sure where, in the middle of the country somewhere. But... What about the next one, or the one after that? So, I got that. Um, I've got the um, Alexis cancel set up for uh, UV sterilization. Uh, they can flood places with ozone and UV light, like down here if I want to run it. For example, um, oh heck, Alexa, initial light ster cancel. It up. Alexa, initialize sterilization protocol. Hmm, I don't know that. Okay, she failed. Alexa, initialize sterilization protocol. No, sterilizations are not treaties. Ah, okay, well, she's uh, had a stroke. Anyway, normally they'll say, you know, come on and. Alexa, Initialize sterilization protocol. Oh wait, it's initiate. It's initiate. Alexa, initiate sterilization protocol. Hmm, I don't know that one. Okay, you know what? I don't know what the deal is. Let me go back upstairs and let me look on the unit and see what I actually told it to do. Got it now. Alexa, activate sterilization protocol. Sterilization protocol initialized. All organic matter will be destroyed at the cellular level. All living beings should evacuate the area immediately. Okay, so this goes on. It's going to turn on a UVC light that creates ozone. And then in, I think it's set to 45 or an hour, 45 minutes or an hour, she'll say that it's now safe for human beings to re-enter the area. And she gives you 30 seconds to get out of the area before she turns it on. So that'll sterilize the basement or any entryway or exit ways. Um, then, we got this. We got this to set up in the, uh, the ducting to purify the air going by the, or sanitize, not purify, sanitize the air going through the ducting. So, 
excuse me, any viron that goes through there, or mold and mildew will get, you know, <coughs> destroyed. And it's got dual bulbs and lots of good things. So that's pretty much what's going on. Uh, mostly, like I said, the surgery. You know, please keep me in your thoughts and prayers. Um, it shouldn't be any problems, but, you know, it's just how I am. <laughs> and we're going to go on a liquid diet starting Friday after the surgery. First one. And then a, a soft food diet, it's like mashed potatoes and stuff. But I don't know the extent of that, and I'll have to get more information on that. Um, and I don't know how for how long. So we'll see. But that's what's up. All right, guys, NCP, y'all have a, a great weekend. Um, I'll be back uh, Saturday or Sunday if things went well, or Monday or Tuesday, or whenever, within like a week, I guess. I'll let you know how things are, and then I can really get back in the hardcore keto diet. I just can't eat like a lot of meats right now, or things that aren't severely pureed. So they come back up, or I can't get them down in my belly. So it sucks. But it'll all be fixed on Monday. Allegedly. Well, let's hope. Alright, have a good one, everybody. NCP out.